This is Michael Bell. You are watching New England Comic Con Reviews. And in the words of uh, Grouchy Smurf, I hate it! Crowded! Hey guys, Vlad, New England Comic Con Reviews. And I'm here with Jim Shooter. I don't know if you guys know him, but he's uh, you, may, you may know him. He's a little comic book artist. Hi, Jim. Can you tell us uh, where can, what, what, what type of your stuff people may know you from? Well, I started when I was 13 years old writing uh, Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes for DC Comics. And they didn't know how old I was. I was just sending stuff in through the mail. And uh, when they found out, uh, when the guy found out I was, uh, I just turned 14, he said, put your mother on the phone. But anyway, so I worked my way through high school writing uh, Superman and Superboy and adventure comics with the Legion of Superheroes. And uh, all of the other, World's Finest, uh, Captain Action. Uh, I did the first race between Superman and the Flash. You know, stuff like that. And uh, eventually I uh, left DC Comics and uh, uh, eventually uh, started working for Marvel. At first I was what they called associate editor, meaning I was basically the editor. I reported to the editor-in-chief, so I was kind of like second in command. Then um, I started writing the, uh, the newspaper strip, the Spider-Man newspaper strip, with uh, Stan Lee and John Romita. The way that would work is I would write the story and then uh, John, I would give little layouts to John Romita, who would draw the art, and then Stan would write the dialogue. So we had a little team going there, and uh, eventually got hired as editor-in-chief. And this is me with Stan Lee back in 1978. Uh, this is me with him last year. <laughs> Ran into him <laughs> at a convention. Anyway, it's just all the stuff we did for all those years at Marvel. Uh, some really interesting, here's a picture Jack Kirby drew for me. It's signed to a good friend. Um, had some great artists like Gil Kane, George Perez, uh, John Byrne. Uh, there's, there's Gil Kane again. Well, I have that comic at home. Oh, it's yeah, really? Great. Yeah. <laughs> and we did Secret Wars. I was the writer as well as the boss. I was the Secret editor. Wars? I was the editor-in-chief, and I, did, I wrote Secret Wars. Uh, Did you have a, a lot to do with that? Not the famous number eight, the black suit. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, I wrote, I did it all. I was, I was in charge, and I, I wrote it as well, and I was, so I was directing it. I mean, right. so what happened was, I, I somebody had suggested once that maybe Spider-Man should have a black costume for when he prowls around at night. It made sense. So we paid the guy for the idea, and then uh, uh, when we were doing Secret Wars, I said, "Hey, this is a good time to use that." So I told Mike Zach, black costume. And he said, well, you know, you want me to give you sketches? Do you have any spe specific instructions? I said, no, I trust you, black costume. And he just knocked it out of the ballpark. He sure man. did. He he sure sure did. did. I have that. I, I saw him last year. I think it was at Rhode Island. And I had him sign my number eight. I'm going to have to go grab my number eight and bring it back. Have you signed it tomorrow? And we, uh, Stan and I cooked up the wedding between Spider-Man and Mary Jane. We Another, did that. another iconic uh, uh, cover. These are just some of the other artists we had. Uh, John Romita Jr. and Al Williamson, Michael Golden, uh, Frank Miller. Started out when I was there. And, uh, well, everybody knows that he became, you know, right. a superstar. Uh, Chris Claremont, uh, John Burns, Fantastic Four. We did the first, uh, the Marvel Universe Handbook which is, uh, you know, t t tells you information about all the characters. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was a new idea. The DC immediately then did who's who. <laughs> uh, nice. Here's the Walt Simonson's Thor, which was a huge hit. Um, anyway, so, I mean, we... I, just, I actually just picked up that Dazzler number one. Well, that was the first all-direct comic book. That was the first one that was sold just to the comic book shops. It was very successful. And we also did adaptations, like we did Star Trek. Uh, we did Star Wars, uh, thanks to Roy Thomas. He was really respons responsible for getting this started. But all the time I was there, we were doing Star Wars. Uh, we did Raiders of the Lost Ark. And we also got involved with Hasbro Toys. And we did the Transformer uh, comics for them, and also G.I. Joe, and, uh, and lots of other stuff. What's, uh, what's the comic that when people ask you about your career, your long, long career, uh, what, what's the comic that stands out in your mind? Or uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I, there's different reasons for me to care about different books. I mean, these were 
we were doing creator-owned comics, which was pretty new at that time, uh, where instead of, you know, you work on Spider-Man, but Marvel owns it, uh, you create your own character, and you own it. You know, so, for instance, Dreadstar by Jim Starlin, uh, it's been published after Marvel was done with it, it was published by other companies. Uh, it also, uh, I think he has a movie deal pending now. Uh, but he owns it. It's not, you know, Marvel doesn't get anything out of it. Right. He owns it. Which is good. That's uh, creators should be able to own their work. We did uh, raise money for charities. This was done to raise money for East African famine relief. Uh, this was done to raise money for 9/11 victims. I wasn't at Marvel when this was done, but they called me up. They said, "Would you help?" I said, "Sure, I'll help." Uh, I did the first authorized biography of the Pope, <laughs> which is a very cool cover. Yeah, it's a cool cover, and we did the first authorized biography. And as I pointed out before. That was my birthday cake that year, with the picture of the Pope on it. Uh, the Vatican liked this so much, they asked us if we could do Mother Teresa, which we did. First authorized biography of any kind anywhere for these two, two people. Uh, started a company of my own, Valiant Comics. Uh, we did uh, uh, Nintendo-based. I'm, I'm sorry. I, most people are going to think I'm a new. You started Valiant Comics? Yeah, that's me. Wow. So you either with the... Um the character Jason David Frank's doing Bloodshot. Blood? Yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. Originally, originally there was it had a different name, but I, I was there when we did the creative work on it. I, I left shortly after that, but uh, but yeah, we did we did all the superheroes, Magnus and Solar. I was the founder of the company and was the primary creator of all of it, uh, and then uh, other people you know chipped in, but. Uh, this Solar Man of the Atom, uh, Harbinger. This was originally created as a, a, a property for Paramount Pictures. They commissioned me to create a, a story for them. So uh, I did, and they, they said, we love it, we love it, we love it, but we want to put Eddie Murphy in it. And I said, no, I don't know. So I took it back, and then I used it at Valiant. I uh, uh, created EXO, um, uh, Unity, Rye, Shadow Man, Archer and Armstrong, Eternal Warrior, and other stuff. But uh, but this was uh, that's that was that era. After that, I started a company called Defiant, and we did a, a number of things, including Plasm, which uh, got quite a bit of, of uh, attention. Uh, and then this is just this book is all just stuff that's too bit too big to fit in the other one. Uh, that's a drawing George Perez made for me, 1978. Uh, yeah, just, just there's a letter from Kurt Swan, if you know who Kurt Swan is. Um, I created the Parasite. And, uh, you know, after that I worked for Dark Horse doing the Solar again and, and Magnus and the rest. Uh, and I just, there's just funny stuff in here. This is these cardboard daggers. Uh, one March 15th, my entire staff murdered me with cardboard daggers. <laughs> so I made them all sign their daggers, and I kept every single dagger. Because it's not every day your staff murders you. Right. You know? Well, I mean, I'm sure a lot of staff wants to murder their boss, but well, so they did it in goodwill. Yeah, they were. It was kind of a goofy thing, you know. I mean, the, the thing is, we were working long hours, and you work hard, and you work long hours, and every once in a while, you just got to do something crazy. Right. You know. So anyway, I had a great group of guys. And they're always coming up with, you know, with this stuff, uh, funny stuff. One, one guy asked me if he could, his name was Mark Gruenwald. He asked me, he said, is it okay if I don't let anybody in my office for two months? I said, what, what, what are you doing? And he said, I can't tell you. And I'm like, oh, God. I said, as long as the work gets done, as long as you can meet with the guys in the coffee room, you know, the freelancers in the coffee room, meet with them in the lobby. I said, as long as the work gets done. He said, yeah, yeah, well. So I'd be walking out every night. I was usually the first to arrive and last to leave. I'd be walking out. I'd hear them hammering and sawing in there. What are they, what are they doing? Turns out they were building a, a haunted house for Halloween. <laughs> and they had this all tricked out with lights that flash and things that would drop down on you and stuff. And you'd, you'd be, it'd be totally dark and they'd kind of have to guide you through. It was, it was hysterical. I, I, I thought, if the upstairs executives see this, we're just doomed, you know. <laughs> but then I saw upstairs executives standing in line to go to the haunted house, so I knew we were cool. Yeah, well, that's a good company to work for when everyone gets involved like yeah, that. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, we, like I said, you, you, you get all those cre creative people, and every once in a while they got to do something crazy just to let off some steam, you know. Uh, but they, it, it, it was fun. I mean, we worked hard.
Uh, it was a, a lot of work, but it was fun. Was there any any a character, any idea anyone brought to you that you just said no to? Like that just doesn't sound right. Uh, there were there were occasions where people would come up with an idea, and I would say I don't think so. Uh, uh, one one guy wanted to do a uh, a comic series about the Bangles. I said, you know, they're not exactly the Beatles yet. You know, I don't know that we're going to sell any of those. And uh, I know one guy wanted to do a story where Spider-Man fathers an illegitimate child. And I said, you know, we that's not right for Spider-Man. You know, I'm sorry. You know, we you know we it's it's like you don't if you work for Disney, you don't mess with a mouse, right? right. If you work for Marvel, you should got to be really careful about what you do with Spider-Man. I told the guy, I said. Do it in Epic Comics. Create your own. You know, do the same story. Everybody will know it's really Spider-Man. You know, and uh, you know, but but you know, you can't do it in the Spider-Man comic book where we have it licensed all over the world, and the licensees wouldn't like that. You know, no, and uh, yeah, no. I mean, you know, it's it's like that would be bad. And also in those days, all the books had the comics code seal, and they all went on this spinner rack that said, "Hey kids, comics, wholesome right. entertainment." And you know you don't want to get parents upset. They buy a comic book and they think it's you know it's it's good action adventure. It's fun. It's Indiana Jones. It's Star Wars. You know uh, that's what they expect. And then if it turns out to be about you know like fathering illegitimate children, they might be disappointed with that. You know right. or upset. So anyway, I, I told him I had to tell him no. I told occasionally told people no. Uh, if you're the boss, you got to do that because it was my job to protect those characters. You know. And uh, uh, so I, uh, I, I did have to say no. Creative people do not like to hear the word no. I, I can imagine. I mean, if you say no to somebody, they get mad and they go off to a fan magazine and they tell everybody what a jerk you are. You know, no one ever says, "He's a wise man. I'm going to do what he says." You know, <laughs> they, they all tell everybody what a jerk you are. Oh, then P.S. Then they come back the, the next week and say, "I'm sorry," and they want their job. You know, well, I never took their job away. I never fired anybody for that. Uh, but. Uh, you know, I mean, like, they, they'd shoot their mouths off, and then they'd, they'd be fine again. <laughs> so, uh, it, uh, to me, it was just, like, part of the job. It's just, you know, it's like herding cats, you know. Right. Now, is there any comics you're working on or any, any projects you're working on right now? Well, I've been doing a lot of small, independent publisher stuff, you know, just kind of for fun and just to keep my hand in, you know. I just did this recently. Where is it? Uh, here, here. This one. Uh, Small independent publishers. This is a company called American Mythology that no one's ever heard of, but they do some nice stuff, right? And they asked me to write a story for them. I said, yeah. I, I just I did it volunteer because these little guys don't have much money, you know. Well, that's awesome. And, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I was, it was fun for me. It was it was good. And the artist uh, artist friend of mine calls me up and he says, he said, here you're doing a story. I want to draw it. And I said, Joe, they can't afford you, you know. <laughs> And he said, he said, well, what are they paying you? And I said, I, I'm doing it for free. He said, I'll do it for free, too. So, <laughs> so, so we did it for free, which I think helped them you know, out a little bit. So I've been doing that stuff. But then recently, I got a, a group that's doing a project with Image Comics got in touch with me. And it's a big thing. It's, it's like this, uh, well, it's going to be 10 issues totally when it's done. Uh, and they want me to, uh, there, there's, there's one writer who's doing uh, part of it. And then they want me to do like the sort of the a parallel story beside it. And then in the last issue, it's all going to get together. I don't know whether they want me to write it or not. So he's writing five. I'm writing at least four, maybe five. Uh, but they also wanted me to like uh, like coach them a little. I mean, because you know I worked for years with Stan, Stan Lee, and Kirby, and Wally Wood, and all those other guys. And 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 so I mean, it's not like I—it's not like it's me talking. It's like me passing on the wisdom of the ancients, you know. <laughs> and so, uh, so they wanted me to do that. They wanted me to like, you know, read what they're doing and, and just give my comments and stuff. So that's so I'm doing that too. I'm you know reading everything and kind of kibitzing, and uh, it's fun. And it's the first mainstream I've done for a while. You know, it's the first kind of big deal. I'm doing all these little things. Um, but uh, so that's that's fun. I'm having a good time with that. They have some really good artists involved, um, and that'll be out. They say the end of this year. I'm thinking early next year. Early and then this year, early next year. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah, it's 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 fun. I'm glad I'm doing it. All right. Well, where can our fans follow you or interact with you? Do you have any social media or? You know, I've got a Facebook page, but I've never actually looked at it. <laughs> uh, so, because when I was doing, I have a blog that's online. 
And when I was doing the blog, the, the person who did the technical work on the blog said, well, you need a Facebook page. And so she made me one, but I've never actually figured out how to use it. Uh, but the blog is still there. I haven't worked on the blog for a while because I've been busy with other things. Uh, but the blog is still up. It's, it's jimshooter.com, easy to remember, jimshooter.com. And on the blog, I, I tell lots of stories like I've just been telling you. And I put up lots of things like uh, letters and pictures and old stuff, you know, if anyone's interested in, in that. I also have a section, a sort of a how-to section, where I, I wrote down a lot of the stuff that I was taught by Stanley and by Mort Weisinger and, and all the other great people I work with. You know, it's like, uh, I, I used to talk to Jack Kirby maybe about five hours a week for two and a half years. And when, it, when Jack Kirby talked, I listened. <laughs> well, I, I don't doubt you know, that I would too. And I'd ask him questions. And, and you know, so I, I learned from a lot of people, a lot of great people. And, uh, you know, like I said, I thought it would be good to write some of it down. So that's on the blog and lots of other some really goofy stuff and some fun stuff and some some serious stuff. Awesome. Well, I will definitely go check out this blog. It's jimshooter.com. Yep. I am going to check it out. You guys should too. And if uh, what on, what other cons are you going to be at on in this area? Do you know? Uh, this area, I think I'm going to uh, Rhode Island. Rhode Island? Rhode yeah. Island. And uh, other than that, this area, I don't know. But I've got a whole bunch coming up. i got one in Mexico. I've got one oh, in wow. Mexico City. I've got uh, one in uh, Winnipeg, Canada. Uh, Sacramento, I can't even remember them all, awesome. but anyway, a whole bunch. Awesome. Well, I know I'm going to go and grab my comics and come back to have Mr. Shooter over here sign them because how can you pass up such a legend? And I was listening with all your stories and absorbing everything. I hope you guys were. Uh, we'll see you later, guys.